Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Brenna and this is my one week postpartum update. I had this little girl at 39 weeks. Um, I kind of wrote everything down here because there's been a lot that's been going on. But I'll just kind of start with right after I had her and how things have been going since then. So I ended up having an urgent C-section, um, if you watched my birth story, and after that, I I basically hadn't packed, you know, I had packed like witch hazel and certain things that I thought I would need for after delivery, but um, the only thing I really needed that the hospital had was like the pads, and then they had, you know, the pain medicine and all that fun stuff. Um, so as far as, I guess, physical symptoms for postpartum, this is, at, this is my one week update, but she's actually 10 days old today. We had her 10, on October 15th, so 10 days ago. Um, and we've actually been home for a week. We stayed in the hospital for three days because she was good to go and we didn't want to stay there any longer than three days. The nurses were coming in every four hours and it was just really hard to sleep. They had to come in every four hours because she had to have a vacuum. Um, they had to use the vacuum on her to get her out of my <laughs> pelvis for my C-section. So anyways, we were just excited to get out of there. As far as for, for physical symptoms, right after we left, I noticed a lot of swelling in my legs. I had a, a lot of edema and I had weighed myself and I was only down six pounds from my when I went into labor, I was 173, and after we left the hospital, or after I got home, I was still 167, so I I knew it was all water weight, but my legs were just painfully swollen, and um, I had asked some other people for advice, and they basically just said to drink a lot of water, that it would eventually go away, and it actually, it's, I'm already down, let's see, what was I, this, I was 157 this morning, so I'm already down another 10 pounds just in a couple days. So I am excited just to not be swollen anymore. Um, but yeah, for physical symptoms, besides lack of sleep, <laughs> she's um, she's been cluster feeding a lot, which is great for my milk supply. My milk came in two days after I went into labor. So by that Tuesday, she was already breastfeeding. And she latched on really good. So... So that was really good, but until last night, I actually hadn't had more than a couple hours of sleep since she was born because the night she was born, or the day after I went into labor, so I went into labor at 11.30 on a Saturday night, and then obviously I couldn't sleep while I was in labor, so I didn't sleep that whole night, and then the following night, I was just still on such a high from having her, and she was crying a little bit, but that's the night I probably should have tried to get more sleep. And then that the second night after that, so it would have been Monday night, so 48 hours is when they really start to cluster feed. And that was a little bit stressful just because, you know, for between my husband and I, we had never been alone with a baby. You know, just she was just crying nonstop and there was nothing I could do. You know, she wasn't hungry. She was just, it was just trying to console her. So... Um, so yeah, just sleep deprivation in general and trying to sleep during the day is a little bit hard for me just because of just a daylight and, um, and that sort of thing. But I think we're finally getting a hang of it. Um, as far as I guess my emotional or psychological feelings, I've heard people talk about like the baby blues and that sort of thing, but I don't think I'm at risk for that. I don't, I guess it's still pretty early, but I feel like I'm more on just a high every day because I'm, this is just everything I've ever wanted. Um, but it's still really early, so it's definitely something I'll keep an eye on. At my two week appointment, which is next week, they'll go over just symptoms and different things that could be warning signs of um, postpartum depression because it is a serious issue if someone does have that. I've just been probably a lot more emotional. Um, I guess I think my hormones are almost more out of whack now than when I was pregnant. I just feel like I'm, I don't, it's probably sleep deprivation along with hormones, but I've been a little bit more emotional and I could be probably more irritable, my husband might say. Um, 
But I think once we're on a good sleeping schedule, all of that will kind of, will hopefully subside a little bit more. Um, and then just hearing her cry, especially when it can't do anything about it. You know, she's not hungry. She doesn't have a wet diaper. There's really nothing that we can think of um, besides, you know, burping her and that sort of thing. There's been two nights like that where she just cried for two hours straight. And it wasn't that she was hungry because I would try to feed her and then she would just scream her little head off. And that really breaks my heart. Um, so that's hard to deal with. Yesterday I went for a drive. We went to drop my husband's car off at the car shop. So we drove separately. And she started crying before I left and just had the saddest face. I felt horrible. And then I first saw tears. I had never seen tears on her before. So just seeing little tears swell up in her eyes, I felt horrible. But as soon as I started driving, she was asleep after six minutes. I was watching the clock, <laughs> and those six minutes felt like a lifetime. But, but right now, I feel like we're finally starting to get somewhere with the sleep, just trying to keep her awake during the day. And it's really nice having my husband home. He's off work for two weeks. And then I had my in-laws come and stay, and that was tremendous help. They help, you know, cooked and cleaned. Um, we also, if you have something like this in your area, it's great, or your church community. But our church has been bringing meals three days a week, and so that's been a huge relief not to have to cook, especially when I'm trying to heal from this, you know, major surgery. As far as pain right now, I don't really feel like I have a ton of pain. They did prescribe me a pain uh, Percocet after she was born, and it kind of makes me feel loopy, so I don't feel comfortable really being on it unless I absolutely have to take it. But other than that, I've just been taking ibuprofen, and you want to keep taking your prenatal. Another thing that I did not know about was, I guess, after, especially after you have a baby, but if you're on any pain medicine, that you definitely want to get Miralax or something to help you go to the bathroom because it's not very glamorous when you can't go to the bathroom for a week. So that is definitely something, if you're planning on having a C-section, I would just go ahead and have, just put it in your hospital bag, have it ready for when you get home. Another thing is my appetite for the first few days after she was born, I felt like it went down, but the last couple days I've been ravenously hungry, just eating a ton and um, oh, and trying to maintain calories for breastfeeding. That's it for my one week postpartum update. I'll try to continue doing updates. The time and my schedule is a lot more packed right now, but I'll try to get them out just for my future reference and then if for anyone that's possibly going to be going through a C-section as well. And I will go ahead and show you my I guess it's still a bump, but my postpartum belly, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, before I show you my bump real quick, I wanted to mention that also, if you haven't invested in any nursing, nursing shirts, I got this one and then a couple other ones from Amazon, but they're nice because you can just take the top up instead of having to take your whole shirt up, and that's something that's very... A lot more convenient, but I'll go ahead and show you my belly. So, definitely still have a bump, a bit of a pooch. I don't know, it will probably take a quite a bit longer to go down. This is my 10 days postpartum belly.